That's Armenian, that's not the one. So it's uh, Christchurch and Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka and, and yeah, the, okay. Hi everybody, welcome again. Uh, I have with me, I hope you remember, Jakob. Uh, he's here more regularly now, praise God. We're going to talk today about uh, something that was raised by one of our brothers and broadly speaking, it's um, attacks and the consequences for attack, religiously motivated or seemingly religiously motivated attacks. So we're going to include today Christchurch and uh, Sri Lanka. So uh, I'm going to let Jakub open with a, a verse I think he's got and uh, off we go. Peace and blessings of Christ be with you all. I'd like to thank all the members of the audience that uh, gave me such a warm reception back to Speaker's Corner. We are doing a Christian mission. Uh, one of the things I felt to come back was to support my sister Kay with her work that she does um, showing the persecution of Christians. I know that Bob, DCCI and Sister Kay are the ones that are big advocates for this and it's a very important essential element. So the first thing I will do, um, I'll give uh, an accolade to our brother Marty who actually sent me um, a message on Twitter and he was very moved by this topic and when I read the article I was very moved me by too. it too. So we can interact by commentary and everything to give us an idea of what's important for the church and how to represent the body of Christ. So I'm going to, to the book of Matthew, first of all, chapter 5, which is the Sermon of the Mount. And Christ said this, these are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and sh say, shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets which were before you. So we know what Christ tells us about persecution. Yes. But um, on a human level, we can't just rejoice. Disregard, yeah, yeah. We can't disregard. And I'd like you to uh, talk to more. To speak about that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. So as I often say uh, during my videos, I am completely committed to Romans 8, 28, to Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. Those are my what, two of my favorite verses. So they both speak of... So Romans 8, 28 says um, that all things work to the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And Jeremiah says, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. And he goes on to say where and how you will find the Lord when you search for, with all your heart. So what I'd like to say is I'm not um, casting aspersions on God's plan. Like I don't know the ultimate plan for the people of Sri Lanka for the people of uh, New Zealand. I know that if they are called to God, they will come to him. It's, it's a foretold and it's a done deal, as it were. But what I'd like to do is speak about the verse which says, when one of the body suffers, we all suffer. So Christ is not um, contradicting himself when he says they are blessed because of the persecution. He himself was persecuted um, utterly because of his divinity and because of his claims to divinity. But um, as a people who live with a, a subjective view of the world, as opposed to the objective truth of God, often because we're forced to live in the world, um, you know, that we need to find compassion and prayer. Prayer is our first and foremost weapon and our defense against the powers and principalities of darkness, which we war against, so we don't war against the flesh. Um, so, yeah, I don't see it as contradicting what Christ says about them being blessed and it's understood that the darkness didn't receive him because it didn't understand him and yet he created all things. So, I mean, if he is persecuted, it's, it's an honour, I guess, to be persecuted because of his name alone and yet we are losing Christians at the rate of hundreds a day. Um, I don't say it's before their time, that's not my call, but what I am saying is it pains me to know that children are being stabbed and raped and set on fire and dismembered and the same for their adult counterparts. And only because they're Christians. And yes, exactly. You see, we have a very big issue with this. I'm going to read another scripture and it's um, Revelations chapter 12 verse 17, just a short verse. And the dragon was wroth, angry, with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, to understand biblical allegories, the woman stands for the church. So the 
devil, according to the scriptures, is angry with the church. Yes. Those that keep the testimony of Christ. Of course he is. Now, the testimony of Christ, we can talk about Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to 47, where Jesus tells us the gospel, Christ died on the cross for yes. our sins, that we should preach repentance and baptism. Yes. So that is the testimony. Excuse and me. we now have to go, who attacks the church on condition of its true belief? Satan. Satan. But what is the arm of Satan in really persecuting the church in modern era? We will Anti say Islam, the well, Antichrist an religion. Antichrist religions. Yeah. Anybody who doesn't profess Christ, by the yeah. way, biblical definition are those who do not, uh, that are Antichrist. Well, some people say the um, China persecutes the church. Yes, yes, but China doesn't have it as a doctrine in a religion. But the, the Quran has it, Quran 930, Quran 812. Uh, I'd like to just quickly point out something. I think it was Orwell who said that. No, it wasn't. It was C.S. Lewis. He said that the worst forms of dictators and cruelty are those who believe they are doing good or God's will. Because an evil dictator will just kill you until you're dead, as it were, and then move on or subjugate you. But people who think they are doing good will continue and continue and continue to persecute and to like diminish um, what they see as a threat, which is the truth. The truth is always a threat to those who do not embrace and uh, are, are not indwelt by the truth. Well, well, in the Hadith, we can see that Muhammad, um, in the life of the Sunnah, he said, I'm, go I'm here to expel the Christians and the Jews from the Arabian Peninsula. And he also, before he passed away, said, I was made victorious by terror. Yes. So now we can go into the article, which is about yes. terror. Um, for those of you that are aware, in Christchurch, uh, I think it was last year, a guy in New Zealand, he's not even from New Zealand, from Australia, he took um, a high-powered rifle, a, a few shotguns, if I'm correct. Yeah, and, and a GoPro. Into, yeah, he went into a couple of mosques and murdered uh, a lot of innocent um, uh, Muslims who were just there to worship, which is a very disgusting act. He, he was not a Christian, he was an ethno-nationalist. He was a guy that specifically said that he has a problem with immigration. But that's not what we're talking about. But there was another incident, uh, a retaliation for this uh, horrendous act that happened in Christchurch in uh, New Zealand. And what happened was that ISIS went to um, a country called Sri Lanka and during the Easter Mass, a lot of Catholic brothers and sisters were murdered, they were blown up in a series of explosions. Now the bad news, and this was brought to me by Marty in a message that really moved him and it's from a Catholic resource and I'd like you to share that resource with I, what's happened to Okay, so it says CNA staff um, and they reported this in Oct on October 6th. A year and a half after church and hotel bombings killed 259 people and injured another 500 in Sri Lanka, five of seven suspects arrested in connection with the attacks have been released by Sri Lanka's government. The government has said that the suspects were released due to lack of evidence. However, Cardinal Malcolm Ranjif of Colombo, as well as friends and family of the victims, have said they fear the release means corruption or a lack of a thorough investigation on the part of the Sri Lankan Criminal Investigation Department. And this is a direct quote. It is sad and unfortunate that those who are alleged to have been involved in the attacks are released, said the Cardinal, uh, three days prior to this report being made. Those who are affected physically and mentally await justice to be meted out. But it is unfortunate that the investigation is not going the way that it should. And on April 21st of last year, suicide bombers detonated during Easter services. At this point, I'd just like to point out, these were categorised everywhere within the mainstream as Easter worshippers rather yes. than the word Christian. Christian yes. So I'd just like to point out that uh, the hypocrisy of um, not wanting to name a person's religion when religion is well, the key aspect of the story Church, they, we, were all, they, they were all Muslims. exactly they, they made a yes. that was an attack on yeah. Islam and also the the, the perpetrator was he he did make some contradictory statements about whether or not he was a christian but the fact is that he was clearly unbalanced from the rest of his manifesto which was censored as well bizarrely um why would you want to know the mental illness that led someone there i don't know so anyway um so Easter services, Catholic churches and one evangelical Christian church, as well as four hotels and a housing complex, um, had suicide bombers visit them. Uh, a total of nine suicide bombers. Later that week, the Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attacks. So the Cardinal and secure, said that security officials had confirmed to him a few months ago that there, were in, that there was sufficient evidence sorry, against many of the suspects who were arrested. Okay, so we, you got the brief. Um, so 
group of jihadis, ISIS, that were well known for persecuting Christians, beheading, raping the Yazidis, a series of crimes. Um, they set up a, an attack to avenge what they called an attack on the Islamic faith in Christchurch that was done yeah. by a person that was not uh, following scripture, a person that said he's an ethno-nationalist, a person that was from another country, is not even a New Zealander. Yeah. Quickly, so we're going to look at the Judeo-Christian legal system of, um, of uh, New Zealand. Yeah. Immediately, they banned um, high-powered rifles. Firearms are banned just because yeah. of a, a murder committed on the Muslims to, in order to try and facilitate yeah. uh, reconciliation. I think there was a compulsory yes. buyback. Yes, yeah. uh, bu a compulsory buyback, but they banned firearms. Yeah. Also, the guy was given a life sentence. He's never going to get back out of prison. Now, we see a difference. Now, we in a developing country, Sri Lanka, loads of Christians killed, ma uh, maimed. Um, no one's held to account. Five of the people are left off, and probably due to corruption or whatever. Yeah. So we see where justice has not been done. Now, the blood of the martyrs, according to the Bible, is calling to the Lord for the Lord to pay back. Now, we Revelation. as Christians, as, as humans, um, as a Christian, I try and walk in my faith. I'm not a perfect human being, neither yourself. Uh, nobody's perfect. How dare but, you, sir? I'm joking. Uh, well, I'm, I'm making I'm a righteous joking. judgment, uh, which is fantastic. <laughs> but the importance about being a Christian is that I try not to fight people. Um, we should not be angry, we should not kill, we should not steal. We should repent we should for not sure steal. if we are. Um, so Christianity teaches us to try and Turn play. the other cheek. Yeah, turn the other cheek. A lot of uh, pastors love our enemies uh, and love pray our for enemies those. as ourselves and uh, yeah. pray for those that persecute us. So why is this hatred for Christians that are supposed to be the most peaceful on the planet? Well, we have to go to who's against Christianity. And I recited... Um, Revelations 12, verse 17, the, the devil is angry with we that keep the testimony of Christ, yes. keep to the commandments. And now we have to understand why are the Muslims attacking Christians in Nigeria, the Fulani, so, in sorry, Nigeria, the So sorry, so the, the, day, Hausa, the yeah. day after Christchurch, 200 Nigerian Christians were attacked and yes. the mainstream potentially were busy photographing uh, Jacinta Ahern's headscarf. They couldn't be bothered to nip over or to get anyone to like just, you know, email them a picture of these 200, count them, people who were persecuted as a direct result, it seems, of um, the actions of, of, a, of a crazy guy. Well, you see, the, the strange thing about the um, persecution of Christians by Islam is that it's been going on for over... Those who believe not in Allah. Precisely. The Crusaders had to come at certain intervals to try and stop this. Um, in the whole of North Africa, which was Christian, is now Islamic. Uh, we see the Muslims with more provocations in Hagia Sophia. Yes. And um, the guy that did the Adnan, which is the call to prayer, he passed away from... Um, conveniently with a, how would I say, heart attack three weeks afterwards. Um, if you, it might be divine retribution uh, for the sacrilege. But Islam is anti-Christ. Our Bible is very clear yes, about and a, this. And the teachings, uh, sorry, just a quick throw in. Um, it, the Bible says anybody who brings a false a gospel other than this, a Christ other than this, is accursed, even if it's an angel of light. So I just want to pass back to Yaku. Yes, and what the Bible tells us is how we define the Antichrist and understanding, because what I want the audience to understand is don't look at the Quran, say 8, 12, 9, 30, attack the Christians, but why are they doing it? And the Bible and Islam is an actual biblical prophecy. So when Muslims come here and they say, why are you a Christian? I just, look, Islam, very good reason. You fulfill the biblical prophecy of the Antichrist. And, the, and it goes as this in 1 John 2, 22. Um, Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is a Christ? He is the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. We see Allah in many parts of the Quran denying he's a son. He says he has begotten no one. So Allah is not the God. And the Bible goes further saying that whoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So by Muslims denying our Lord Jesus Christ, you are actually aligning yourself with the Antichrist doctrine, which is the Antichrist will be judged in the Day of Judgment. Yes. He comes with a, a certain it's, figure called yeah. the Antichrist. There are many Antichrists in the world, many people against um, the truth of Christ, but there is one specific Antichrist. Yeah. And there's only one religion that fits in with our biblical prophecy. Uh, for example, the Hadith saying that the worst person in the sight of Allah on the Day of Judgment is the King of, is kings. The king of kings, which is a title of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's very, very assured that Islam will attack Christianity, blow Christians up, murder them, rape them, burn them alive in churches. And uh, I showed you a picture from a woman from my mm -hmm. local, a, a young girl, yep. a three-year-old girl with a kitchen knife embedded in her head. That is what Muslims do. I'm from the Sahara. 
don't listen to the clowns here that come and do this kind of pretense in this speaker's corner. The real true Mohammedism is about jihad. That's the only way of salvation in Islam and killing Assured Christians, salvation. destroying Christians, destroying Jews. It says in the uh, Hadith, on the last day of judgment, that the, Jew, the trees will be hiding the Jews, the Gaha tree, and the stones will be telling the, the Muslims, will grow here's, a a here's a Jew, kill the Jew. So this is Islam. And if you are still in doubt, look at this East Gate prophecy. Suleiman the Magnificent, he sealed the East Gate. Why? Because he was told the Jewish Messiah will come at the East Gate. And what did this pagan peasant do? This idiot... Put a cemetery he, there? Yeah, he put a cemetery and he blocked off the wall. This Mohammedan thought the Almighty God will be stopped with bricks and mortar and a few dead graves in front of the um, place where the Muslims will be judged. And furthermore, Gog and Magog. But, but sorry, the last but, one. Oh, quickly, on, it, shows, it yeah. shows that the guy who blocked up the entrance secretly believed the prophecy to be true, that Christ would return in glory and that he is... He is the coming Messiah and he is God, because otherwise why do you try to prevent something that your God has already told you well, it's not going to happen? Well, fantastic, because yeah. Muslims say they believe in the Messiah, they say they believe in Christ. So why did Suleiman the Magnificent, a well-educated Muslim that had many, many scholars around him, think that he had to stop the Jewish Messiah? And even if you go into the Quran 4157, he said the Jews say they killed the Messiah, but they killed him not. Why would the Jews kill the Messiah? Why would the so Jews even call Allah him Messiah? They didn't think he here. was. Because the Jews have been waiting for the Messiah for thousands of years. So what we do and what we can clarify is that Islam is an antichrist ideology. It goes against those sharing the testimony of Christ. If you see our Christian brothers here preaching the gospel, the Muslims will heckle them. They don't want to hear the truth that Christ died on the cross for our sins, which is why we as Christian missionaries are. But I'm not here to a Bible rant. What we're here to do is show... <laughs> we find out 10 minutes after he started. I'm only kidding. <laughs> we're here to show the true sufferings of many of our Christian brothers yes. and sisters worldwide. Whether it's in China, in uh, uh, concentration camps, whether it's in um, the Middle East... At North the Korea, Chad, Sudan, yeah. Somalia, yes. Ethiopia. Arcadia, Maghreb, ISIS yep. in Africa, Boko Haram, Fulani. Armenia. There's so many, even in Kenya, Al-Shabaab. Yeah. So we have all these Muslim groups, but they're going by their religion. They actually believe the testimonies of uh, Quran 930, Quran 929, and the many other um, ayats and surahs yep. from 812. Yeah. Um, what do you have to say um, we can tell our Muslim audience about Okay, what I'd like to say to Muslims is that I actually love you. Uh, I know you don't all feel the same way uh, about me, but I am. Uh, I have many, many friends who are Muslim, um, and I, I, I've got no interest in secular nonsense. I don't really care. The whole world is under the control of Satan. That's a fact. I think Muslims would accept that also. I'm told not to fight against the flesh, but to fight against the principalities of darkness. So what I don't want to happen, and none of you can help me with it anyway, I don't want to be kneeling on Judgment Day and have God ask me, and I have no answer, why didn't you love them enough to just tell them the truth? Because the truth can't be diluted, it can't be changed, um, you know, because I've got a clever argument or not, it can't be changed. The truth is the truth, and the truth hurts as well. And there is only, unfortunately, one book that's, that denies the crucifixion of my God, and, and that's the Quran, and I've read it. And I don't speak Arabic or read Arabic, but I've read it and I don't accept that guy, Isa, as my Jesus, as my God. And the Bible then tells me what to do if there's a false Christ. So with love, Muslims, I don't want to talk you out of Islam. There's no point in being an atheist. I think you'd agree with that as well. But just look into it. That's all. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I really am. I have joy in my heart when people um, want to find out about Christ. So this gentleman has a question, but but I'm just going to let Jakob finish and then hopefully we'll yeah, we'll get to this guy. Yeah, there's someone with the question. So have you got a uh, yeah, like um, a closing? Just, just before um, just before the questions, I I'll go into the early church. Um, they were persecuted me. by the Romans. We saw Christians being fed to lions. We saw Christians being crucified and some beheaded. The Bible actually tells us in Revelations that um, those that were beheaded for the testimony of Christ. And if you look at Quran 8.12, it says, smite them by the neck. So we have a, another biblical prophecy fulfilled from the book of Revelations by Quran 8.12.
Now, what we say as Christians is that we are to share the testimony of Christ, that Christ died on the cross for our sins. This is what we need to do. But why are so many people so angry that they feel the need to send suicide bombers into churches to blow peaceful people pre uh, uh, preaching? These are not people attacking them, that they feel that they can rape a woman in a church and behead her, uh, which is a really nasty, shocking event. There's only one religion doing this, and it's unfortunately Islam. But when you talk to the Muslims, they make a lot of um, uh, difficulties for themselves by trying to justify these immoral acts. Rape is wrong, murder is wrong, beheading, mutilation is wrong. There's no how you can justify it. If your God is so weak that you have to fight for your God, then he's not a God worth serving. And you cannot be victorious by terror. The church has been persecuted for over 2,000 years and is still growing strong. And this is what the Romans, the Roman Empire fell and the church rose. Prevailed, and, yeah. And prevailed. Now, what's going to happen now is that there will be a second coming of Christ. And those that are persecuting the church will pay the price. And we call our Muslim brothers to try and read the New Testament to repent your ways. You do not want to be in the camp of Satan because Allah has the titles of Satan. He's called al makkah the great deceiver. John 8.4.4 tells us that the liar and the deceiver is Satan. He was a murderer from the beginning. And these are the things that we come to warn the Muslims. It's hard hearing, but you have a responsibility for your soul. I don't have your blood on my hands. I've come here, I've faced the persecution and God has blessed me for it. But what's more important is that I want to see you Muslims being sincere to yourselves and reading the truth and contrasting why are you following a man that murdered, raped and pillaged and you refuse to follow a man that healed the sick, raised the dead, brought people back to life, um, helped the poor, nourished his followers. Who is called followers. in Surah 19, righteous alone. Like how can there you go. How can there be a better example of someone who Allah shows as righteous without any sin? Like when we all have sin and none are righteous, none are good but God. That's not the Quran, that's the Bible. Um, and, and by my reckoning, that, that's not the thing that makes him God. The thing that makes him God is that he is God. But um, he alone is righteous. He alone has righteous righteousness and no sin is in him. The sin entered the world through the first Adam. And from the second Adam, who is Christ, it is atoned for only if you accept the gift that God is offering to you on a plate, literally. You can't do anything to earn it. God couldn't love you anymore, and he certainly can't love you any less. He loved us while we were yet sinners. Enough to die for us, enough to suffer the humiliation, the insults, the being spat at, the being lashed, the being crucified, the uh, being blasphemed and denigrated and misunderstood and hated. And he continued to be hated because the truth hurts. And unfortunately, Christ says, I am the truth. He is the way, the yes, only yeah. way to salvation. And when he is pilloried and portrayed as somebody else, um, then I'm afraid I can't accept this secondary counterfeit Christ because my God says, anyone who comes in my name who is not of me, anyone who comes with a different Jesus, a different um, gospel is a curse. There's no finding the good parts of it. It's unfortunate. There are some, some good parts in it. But at the end of the day, there's also um, parts where Christ is speaking from the cradle, for example, taken straight from Thomas, and the words change to demote him and blaspheme. Thomas, yeah, the inf for infancy gospel, to, if anyone wants to look for it. Yeah, Christ says uh, in there that he is divine, and in the Quranic alternative uh, telling of the story, he says, I'm merely a prophet. Even, even if it... Uh, even if it was copied word for word, the fact is it didn't come from Jibreel, it came from Thomas, that, that verse, so. Yes, yeah. and, and many parts, 40% uh, of the Quran is actually plagiarized from other books for those that are not aware. And 65% of the Quran is repeated wording. So um, the God of the Quran is not really accurate with his um, um, assessment. If you read the Quran and the Tafsirs, that's why the Tafsirs are so important for it to be understood. But however, uh, we're going back to the uh, somebody had a question. I, I don't think know. he got bored yeah, of it, to bored. be honest. Okay, um, does anybody have a question? Anybody that wants to ask about Christian persecution or where it fits in with the um, Islamic doctrine? Anybody, open question. It's not fine a review. if not. We don't uh, bite anyone. We just want intellectual arguments. If you ask that we nicely, can it give, could be arranged. Um, <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay.